Hey guys! So the Chinese government in 2017 announced their decision to create a new modern metropolis, Zhonang, in Hebei, a province in northern China. The project should include a large, innovative, green, smart 5G city with special infrastructure equipped exclusively with self-driving cars. So let's find out why China needs this new city, who will live in it, and what they've already managed to build with thousands of cranes since some time has already passed. Now, as you know, the rapid growth of China is bringing huge and irreparable damage to the country's environment. The level of pollution in the air, rivers, and cities is one of the highest in the world. Now, one of the main problems is air pollution, especially in large cities, which has reached catastrophic levels. Two-thirds of cities have surpassed the maximum accepted air pollution level by five times. Now, according to research, most of the air pollution is made up of tiny particles formed from burning coal from industrial and household production in fireplaces, and exhaust and smoke brought by the wind. For example, the level of pollution is so high in Shanghai that the local government even had to consider giving its citizens protective masks for daily use. Now, because of these problems, the Chinese government has seriously thought about creating new cities capable of decreasing the burden of metropolises like Shanghai and Beijing. Zhongan is a city that should be an example for new urbanism. The project is unlike many other new Chinese cities because the Communist Party and Chinese government are directly involved. This proves the strategic importance for the country. It's a kind of postcard and symbol for big changes. Now, in theory, Zhongan should be the world's first city that has only self-driving cars. The government proposed investing $583 billion dollars and raising the population of the new city to 2.5 million people. The company Baidu signed a contract with the local administration to create a smart city. Now, the project's goal is creating special infrastructure in the city that will provide high reliability, safety, and eco-friendly transport flow using high-speed 5G internet to coordinate the self-driving electric cars movement. The infrastructure includes sensors everywhere, replacing traffic lights with computer-aided cameras, a system that recognizes pedestrians on crosswalks and their height, as well as a sharp decrease in parking places in the city due to high optimization and use of underground parking garages. Next, they plan to eliminate cars in the city center for pedestrians and cyclists by hiding the main roads in tunnels. The tunnels will be designed for high speeds. This design is possible with self-driving cars, but would be very difficult to execute with normal cars because of regulation difficulties. A major role will be played by the train station, which is both impressive in scale and in technology. There's no surprise since passenger traffic between neighboring metropoles is being planned in earnest, and the decision to transport people using high-speed trains seems rational and eco-friendly. The train station in Zhang'an needs over 5.1 million square feet of solar batteries to provide electricity that will produce 5.8 kilowatt hours of electricity every year. It will have the 5G network, use edge computing methods to accurately determine location and navigation, and will have other new technologies. Now, they plan to build a transparent roof over the main hall to provide natural light. The new 57-mile railway between Beijing and Zhang'an will support 17 pairs of trains daily. They will run at speeds up to 186 miles per hour, and the travel time between the endpoints will be under 50 minutes. Construction of the world's first soundproof 2,780-foot-long tunnel along a high-speed railway has also finished. The main design is a steel rounded frame with openings 39.63 feet long and 31 feet high, covered by metal noise-dampening panels 237,000 square feet in total. They will keep the noise coming from the high-speed railway as low as possible. Now, according to an announcement from an old manager of a high-speed railroad corporation, after modernization of this section, speeds will be increased to 217 miles per hour on the route between Beijing and Zhang'an 
decreasing travel time to 36 minutes. Zhang'an is to be an example for green growth for the entire country. Water transfer has been happening in Lake Baiyangdian for over two years now. This lake is the largest source of fresh water in North China, where the new city is being built. Requirements for cleaning wastewater are strict with improving the ecological situation in mind. Polluting production has also been terminated. This has caused the water quality in Lake Baiyangdian to improve significantly. Additionally, over 40 million shrimp eggs were released into the lake to restore the lake's resources. The Green Project also saw 11 million trees planted, with much more ambitious plans still to come, since they plan to increase the forest coverage in the area from the current 11% up to 40%. So naturally, the decision to create another new region for the government immediately caused a fury of emotion in Chinese society. Economists and political scientists think, from a project significance point of view, that Zhang'an will be a new post for the national economy's growth and could help prevent disastrous overgrowth in neighboring cities, optimize economic growth, and support the environment. So, the new city should be responsible for several functions of Beijing and ease the load on the capital area. Some Chinese capital structures will be moved here that aren't connected with administrative control, like schools, universities, and large offices. After opening, after opening the new area, Beijing could be more focused on capital functions, which will also decrease the city's overpopulation and decrease pollution to a certain extent. The new region will also provide economic growth in a region around the capital and in regions where Beijing's prosperity hasn't reached yet. Now, the location for the new metropolis wasn't chosen by accident, since this is in northern China, which has been developing less dynamically than the south and needs a powerful industrial growth point. Beijing can't play that part now because of its problems with the environment, overpopulation, and functional overload. So, a new city should do it in its stead. It's worth noting that there was a competition for various types of designs for Zhang'an, when most participants were sitting at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So according to the developers, the only thing they thought about was what they were lacking when they couldn't leave their homes. So a home idea arose calculated for being there during a long quarantine. The home would be comfortable for its residents and provide them with all the necessities with almost no need for deliveries. The program includes normal apartments, communal housing for the young and elderly, offices, swimming pools, shops, food markets, daycares, an administrative center, and a fire station. So the first floor will have shops with 3D printers and digital workbenches that can quickly make what the residents need, but that aren't available for some reason. The roof will have greenhouses that will provide food and solar batteries on the roofs. The complex's resource efficiency is based on a loop system of energy and food production, secondary use of materials and water. The apartments will have spacious exits to terraces on the south side, which will replace the outside in case of quarantine for the residents. They will also serve as the thermal buffer between the interior and exterior. Remote working conditions were considered as well. They include a 5G connection and home offices. This region, once it's finished, promises to be one of the best to live in. While most Chinese gleefully draw pictures of future Zhang'an, some spectators are already ready to make big money by selling real estate in three counties where it will be built. According to the media, on the second day after the new metropolis was announced, people from all over China moved here to buy anything, even shabby houses on the cheap. However, according to the corresponding government orders, Buying and selling real estate in Zhang'an is temporarily frozen. But despite that, several people are still making illegal deals. According to the Preparatory Commission for the new Zhang'an region, the corresponding authorities quickly reacted to the speculation and illegal deals. They are doing everything they can to fight the speculators, as well as provide stability for the real estate market. Officially, Zhang'an's initial area will be about 38.6 square miles. Then it will increase to 77.2 square miles. 
and finally may reach up to 772.2 square miles. Zhang'an will be the first step away from the practice of building human anthills, a model of optimized growth for a densely populated and economically active region, and will improve regional city construction as well as serve as a new stimulus for development on an innovative base for both the Chinese and everyone else. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to hope that the Chinese government can accomplish their goal, since ecological disasters in China affect our planet as a whole. And that's all for today. So be sure to leave a like, comment, let me know, would you live in Chang'an? Yes or no? And uh, we'll see you again next time.